Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. To the public, welcome. And as we always do before we start our meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. You can stand tall without standing on someone. You can be a victor without having victims. Thank you very much. Call the 14th regular meeting of the Common Council's order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Here. Gisha. Excuse. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunis. Here. Manny. Excuse. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Smith. Here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Excuse. Ann Wangaman. Here. 13 present. Quorum is present. It's time to pledge our allegiance to the beautiful country we live in. Alderman Wagaman, would you please lead us, sir? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Wagman. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make the motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Resignations, <coughs> Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. The first one is from uh, Alan Hendrickson, uh, who's on the was on the Board of Water Commissioners, advising that uh, he moved to Sheboygan Falls and would be resigning from the uh, Water Commissioners Board. Ask for a motion to accept and file. President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. A letter dated September 26th of this year from Ernest M. Kepler uh, advising the mayor that the, he's resigning from the Sheboygan Redevelopment Authority due to conflicting schedules and an upcoming <coughs> double knee replacement surgery. Need a motion to accept and file. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make the motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just like to wish Mr. Kepler a, a speedy recovery. He's a, he's, he participates in a lot of comings and goings of the city, and we appreciate his work, and hope he can come back soon. Thank you very much, Alderman Bauk. President Hanna. You know, I had two knees replaced myself, and I was back on the handball court in two months, so it's pretty <laughs> weak. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Michael? He's probably watching this. We have a motion to accept the resignation. Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation accepted. Communication from uh, Alderman Hanna to the mayor. Please accept my resignation from the group insurance committee. Need a motion to accept and file. Vice President Boren. Uh, motion to accept and file. Second. Second. Alderman Ryan, she wants to say just second? Yes, Mr. Mayor, oh. if I may. Thank Alderman you. Ryan. Um, I'm just... going to vote against Alderman Hanna resigning from the insurance committee. He's put a lot of work into this committee. He is our insurance expert on this council. It's not very often that we get people that are so well suited to a certain issue such as insurance and Mr. Hanna and his expertise. Um, so I'm going to give Mr. Hanna my vote of confidence by voting against him resigning from <clears throat> the insurance committee. Uh, I don't think that the grounds of his resignation uh, are valid to start with. Uh, I guess there was a uh, uh, there, there was a question about uh, possibly uh, some, some con personal conflicts, etc., cetera, uh, which uh, simply are not valid. So I myself, I'm going to not allow Mr. Hanna, if I have my decision, to resign from the, insur the insurance committee. We need him on that. And I hope others would do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. We have Alderman Bauk next. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, would echo Alderman Ryan's uh, request of the fine men and women of this council. Uh, Alderman Hanna has served honorably. He's a man of great integrity. We all know that to be the case. And uh, we need him to continue his service on that. So I, too, will vote no and, and not, not to accept this resignation this evening. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Bauk. Alderman Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. 
I made the motion only for the sake of discussion. I'm also also <coughs> going to vote against uh, the resignation. I've seen firsthand, I've been attending all of the insurance committee meetings. I've seen firsthand the quality of Alderman Hanna's work on this committee. And I know all of the countless hours that he spent behind the scenes, and I'm uh, very grateful that for that time that he spent. Thank you. Well, Manhattan, given all that, you've got one more, probably going to say the Can same thing. No. <laughs> Would you reconsider, sir? At this juncture, why don't you let them vote? Okay, very good. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I was going to echo what everybody else said, but I was also going to say that Alderman Hannah knows what's best for Alderman Hannah, so he made the decision to resign, so I will stick with his decision unless he would change his mind publicly. I will publicly defer to you. Okay. And <clears throat> more discussion? <coughs> okay. We will call uh, the vote on the, motion, on the motion to accept and file the resignation of Alderman Hanna and the Group Health Insurance Committee. And there's no more. Do you want a roll call? Please call the roll. And then an I vote would be to accept and file his resignation. A no vote would be not to accept and file. Okay. Bauk. No. Hannah. Abstain. Heideman. No. Kittleson. No. Clayunis. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. No. Rinfleisch. No. Ryan. No. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Wangerman? No. Boren? No. <coughs> Two ayes and 11 noes. Motion carries. Alderman Hanna, you're stuck. Back on. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> OK. Anything else? Motion, motion fail. fails. Motion, motion fail. So I still, uh, well, never mind. Go ahead. Put oh, the next one. Go ahead. Uh, Letter to the mayor and council dated October 9th from Mark Summer advising that uh, uh, he's resigning from the Labor Management Committee and the Health Insurance Committee as representative of local 5011 city professionals employees. A motion to accept and file. President Hanna. I'd make the motion to accept and, and file and also to thank Mark for his service. Second. Motion and second. Any f more discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. And for appointments, I've got uh, dated October 15. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. David Gass to be considered for appointment to the Redevelopment Authority to fill the unexpired term of Ernest M. Kepler, whose term expires 4-30-11. Signed by the mayor. That will lie over. Mark Cephas to be considered for appointment to Group Health Insurance Committee as the employee representative for Mead Public Library with a term expiring 4-30-08. That one will lie over. Uh, the Special Committee on Regulation on Sidewalk Cafes, uh, Alderman Wangaman, Clayunis, Bauk, uh, Dennis Radke, Doug Pellner, and then non-voting members, Chuck Adams, Assistant City Attorney, Lieutenant David Schaffhauser, from the police department, Steve Sokolowski, city planner, all uh, appointed 101507, terms to expire 121107, signed by the mayor. That one lies over too. Is that it? Yeah. Thanks. So. Thank you. Vice President Boren. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. On the uh, document that Attorney McLean just read uh, for the Special Committee on Regulation of Sidewalk Cafes, that's set to expire. 1211, and if that lies over, it's going to lie over until our first meeting in November, which the original intent was to give the committee about 45 days. And uh, I talked with Alderman Wangam in here, and that is going to be cutting it pretty short. There is a document in here tonight from Law and Licensing approving the committee. I would kind of like to suspend the rules on this and vote on it tonight if possible, just to keep the uh, flow of the committee going. Procedurally, can we appoint before the committee is created? I don't think so. You need to pull or pull the document before this, but hmm? you need to either pull the document before this, but you can't confirm okay. before you have your document. Okay. Uh, so if I pull the document later on in the meeting, is that going to be okay then, or the motion to? I mean, the where, where are we now? 
We're right now we're in uh, mayor's was, appointments. Was that the last document? Mm -hmm. Yes. So he can now make a motion, pull other document forward. You need to pull the other document yeah. forward, All and right. then we need to move on that. And uh, I don't know which one that, which we one? had a city clerk, do you remember what document that um, was right that off That would hand? be 1432. It's a resolution. Right. I believe. Yep. Uh, can I make a motion then that resolution be put upon its passage? Second. Motion and second to put resolution upon its passage. That's creating the uh, temporary committee. Under discussion, Alderman Rinchleisch. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A point of clarification, do we need suspension oh, I'm sorry. before we do this? Oh, you're right. Yes. We need to suspend the rules. Okay. President Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I would move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion second. Is there any objection to suspending the rules? There being none, now your motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Your Honor, I move to put the resolution upon its passage. And a second. Under dis further discussion. There being none. All in favor say aye. Oh, Alderman Kendall. Thank you, Mayor. I guess I was just wondering why can't the current uh, committee, with the help of the city attorney, take this on and without establishing another committee? Thank you. Sure to that. Thanks. Okay. I want to ask uh, Vice President Boring to respond. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for the question, Alder Person Kittleson. Uh, this was taken up at the uh, last Lawn Licensing Committee last Tuesday. We had some public input, but the, the, pub, uh, the committee felt that with the amount of uh, uh, questions about the proposed ordinance, that it would be better to step back and let a separate committee of interested parties, including two business persons who will be affected by the ordinance, have their input. And we just thought that we could not dedicate enough time in the committee to go over the ordinance again. And so that's why we wanted to establish the special committee. Okay, President Hanna. No, thank sir. you. Just, <clears throat> and I just wanted to, to mention, I was going over that list, and I, I appreciate the work that all the person born has put in to put together a, a good cross-section. It's an important issue. And it also reflects how well the council can work. It was an issue that was going to get hot, and people have decided to, to pull it aside and study it more thoroughly. I think that's excellent. That's true. Thank you, President Hanna. Alderman Rainflash. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, specifically, uh, while we have three voting members are aldermen, two voting members are, uh, just to uh, reiterate what uh, Alderman Bohr had said, uh, are actually business owners who currently have uh, sidewalk seating as well, one of which will be um, someone who has one that's a, a establishment that serves alcohol and one is not. So both establishments we heard clearly uh, who deal with the businesses every day, pay their bills, advertise, market, get clients in. There are things that I do not deal with in that committee. So the reason why I'm asking for their input is because they know their businesses better than I do, and I would much rather have them work with us in establishing these ordinances than us dictate to them. So that's why I'm definitely in support of, of bringing on those business owners onto this, this subcommittee as well. And I'd also like to point out that it is a short-term uh, committee. Uh, hopefully we'll get the information gathered quickly so we can act upon that before next summer rolls around. Uh, then we'd have either regulation established or not, but we have a decision made before that so people know what they can and cannot do with their businesses. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Any further comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now I need a motion to suspend the rules to uh, make the appointments. Thank you, Your Honor. I need a motion to suspend the rules to accept the appointments. Is there a second? Second. Any, any objection to suspending the rules? There be a none. I need a motion to confirm the appointments. Motion to confirm the appointments. Motion and second. Any discussion? There be a none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments are confirmed. Thank you very much. Thank you. This next item on the agenda is recognition of awards to City of Sheboygan. And there's three awards that I just want to point out to you that are important. And if you have any specific questions, I'd like to direct you to Frank Kalko. He's the one that uh, attended the meeting and is, uh, is more knowledgeable about uh, the awards. And they have to do with our efforts to, to, uh, to improve our risk management programs and thereby provide good quality service to our employees, uh, safe uh, environments and so forth, and at the same time save the city and the taxpayer money. And the first one that they awarded was a 20 years 
of service with CIFMIC, and that stands for Cities and Villages Mutual Insurance Company. It's the same company that we, we work with to be self-insured. So we've been with them for 20 years, and it's a heavy piece of glass, folks. That's what, it's a recognition here. The second one is an award that was given to the city of Sheboygan because it has demonstrated excellence and creativity in the development of an original risk management and loss control operational best practice in sharing this idea. Your community has earned a 2007 significant program award for developing and producing an effective learning tool for employee safety training. And again, it's a good recognition for our community. The second one is because Sheboygan has demonstrated excellence in compliance with recommended risk management and loss control operational best practices as set forth in CIFMIC's risk management assessment process and has earned the 2007 Award of Excellence, a silver award. So I think uh, the city deserves a round of applause for that. Thank you very much. The next uh, recognition will be to Mr. Ed Zurich, and I'd ask that he step up. And we have an award. As you know, Ed has decided to retire to go enjoy life, like some point I wish I can do myself. And uh, we wanted to recognize him tonight for faithful and dedicated service to the City of Sheboygan, Director of Human, Sur Human Resources and Labor Relations from 1999 to 2007, Edward B. Sir. Thank you for all the work. Thank you. I'm lost for words over here, but thank you very much. I just want to say I, I do appreciate the opportunity to to have served the city of Sheboygan, it's a great city. Uh, it's got a lot of great employees, dedicated employees, I think, which make it what it is. And again, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Next item on the agenda is public forum, Madam City Clerk. Um, first on the list is Tom Bowers. If Mr. Bowers could come up, please. Thank you for allowing me to uh, speak. Uh, Mr. Bowers, could I, before you start, could I get your home address, please? 2120 North 36th Street. North 36th. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. City Manager, Mayor, City Administrator, and Mayor. What form of government is best for the City of Sheboygan? The Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance would like to invite all citizens, including the Mayor, Council Members, and citizens of Sheboygan County to attend our free public forum Monday, October 22nd, in the Urban Middle School Auditorium. The time will be from 7.30 to 8.30. Speakers, Ed Henshaw, Executive Director of the Wisconsin City County Management Association. Gary Rogers, Wapan City Administrator. The Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance neither advocates or endorse any forms of government. This is strictly for an information period, and we would appreciate if uh, people would uh, attend. If there are any questions regarding this forum, you may call me at 457-5797. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowers. Next would be Henry Capitillo. And I don't see Mr. Capitillo here. Is that it? Yes, that okay. would be it. <clears throat> Thank you for addressing the Common Council. Next item on the agenda is the Mayor's comments, and there's three things I'd just like to share with you today. The first one being White Cane Safety Day. Second, comments, just a few comments on the budget, because we're not quite done with that yet, and then progress on some of the city projects. 
The White Cane Day is a, a day that Governor Doyle has proclaimed as White Cane Safety Day in the state of Wisconsin. In the state, there are approximately 200,000 visually impaired people and over 20 who are blind or have substantial vision loss. People with visual impairment want to live an independent and productive life in our community. And in order to do so, typically use a travel aid, usually a service dog or a white cane. People who operate motor vehicles must and should be familiar with state law and be on the alert for the visually impaired walking around in our city. State law requires all motorists to stop while a pedestrian is in the crosswalk. It requires motorists to stop while people walking with white canes or service animals are still in the curb. State law also requires that motorists stop even if the person with the, white, with the cane or dog is violating a pedestrian law. In other words, give them full pledge respect. And also, let's be mindful that our neighbors with vision problems every day that they have vision problems every day, not just one day. So if we're going to observe the White Cane Safety Day, let's do it every day and be careful. Thank you. Comments on the budget. We're at a point here where the budget has, the, the executive review of the budget has gone before all the standing committees. Tonight, those uh, report of committees that pertain to the budget will go to the finance committee. At that point, the Finance Committee will review the budget, may or may not make changes as they, seem, um, as they deem appropriate, and then that budget comes back to the uh, Common Council on November 5th. We have a public hearing on the 6th, and then another public hearing on the 19th. And, and I'll say that again. The 6th, we, the 6th, we publish a notice of the public hearing. On the 19th is a public hearing on the proposed budget. Now that public hearing is being done before the public hearing on the same day that the budget is approved. And that is being done in response to people asking us to allow them some time to come in and address us if they so desire before, at least a week or so before we approve the budget. In the past, we would have the public hearing the same night we passed the budget. And for some reason or another, which is obvious to me, people didn't like that. They wanted to have some time to address us. Again, they may or may not come, but if they do, they have plenty of time to do. You have plenty of time to, in to incorporate their thoughts and their wishes into your actions as, as a common council. And then on November 26, we will have a special meeting to adopt the 08 budget. That's when the budget gets um, approved. As we stand now, and that is with the as the budget stands now, with, with all the requests that were made, all the deductions that were made during my executive review, and some of the new numbers that have been plugged in as a result of the work that has been done with the Group Health Insurance Committee, and the work that has been done by uh, Alderman Hanna and Alderman Gisha uh, with the uh, Early Retirement Incentive uh, Program. As it stands now, if we were to plug in all those numbers, all those uh, revenues and expenditures over on the revenues, we, we would still be uh, 201527 in the hole. That is a number that's still manageable that we can work with when it goes to finance department. Now I say that with a caveat, and that is that by plugging in those numbers and having the 201000 numbers, there were 14 city employees that took early retirement. There was four in the police department, five in fire, and five in public works. That amount, that total amount for those 14 people will no longer be an expense on the 08 budget in the amount of $1,277,000. That's what is a call savings in our case. But if we reduce that amount, the savings by the amount of the retirement incentive that we're going to have to pay. Now, the council has two choices. You can borrow the money and pay interest, which I don't recommend, or you take it directly out of that savings. That amount will be $577,091. That leaves you a balance of $623,678 
That's a savings. Provided, and you must understand this, provided that you don't hire anybody else to replace those 14 people. If you do, it starts chiseling away from that amount. So that is a challenge that the, the finance committee is going to have to look at um, and make a determination as to how it wants to deal with it. I may, and it's uh, within my options, I may just have another executive review of the budget myself to, to uh, make some further recommendations to, to the department heads so that we can comply with some of these numbers. Now, the early retirement plan was, in effect, a plan to, to save money for the OAID budget and a way to perhaps add additional people in some departments that really needed uh, some additional people. But you have to understand that right now we're going with uh, no increase in the levy, I mean, no increase in the tax rate, which doesn't give us a lot of money there. So we don't have a lot of more revenue. The other thing that happened since is that um, our revenue sharing, we had anticipated, although we didn't plug that number in, hoping that we would get it because we were told that we were an additional $200,000 in revenue sharing. Well, it turns out the last I hear, although the budget hasn't been passed at the state, we're getting about $181,000 less. So that has been added uh, to, to the dilemma. The, the fiscal dilemma that we have. Uh, we've looked at every nook and cranny as to how we can find money. Uh, folks, there is no money. We get our money from the levy. The people no longer want to be taxed. I had said that publicly in, in, the, in a meeting during a council meeting, and I said it publicly to the newspaper that I was, hearing pe no, I was no longer hearing people um, concerned about the taxes going up. Well, guess what? They are, because they started calling me. They are calling. As soon as I said that, the phone rang, the emails popped up. So they are concerned. Our two major sources, which is a, a little over 85, 86% of our budget, come from revenue sharing and the levy. As I just said, people don't want to pay more, and we're not going to charge them more. And the levy's not increasing, it's decreasing. Our, our expenditures are increasing, regardless of whether our revenues are or not. And that's the fiscal dilemma that we are faced with tonight and that the Finance Committee is faced with uh, in the coming week and that I have to deal with in one way or another so that we can be responsive to the people's pleas for less taxes or no more taxes. The next item that I'd like to talk about would be the, some of the progress on, on the projects that we were handling. As you know, we had a groundbreaking ceremony for, for Grand Stay, and it, it was just phenomenal. There was a lot of people there. The, uh, the, some of the projects that we, we've worked on in 07, North 9th Street was converted to a two-way traffic. 7th Street will be following. We have a $1.2 million uh, dollars of road resurfacing and reconstruction already completed. It's money that has gone back into the community. We have $120,000 of sidewalk repair that has been completed. We have 50% of the river boardwalk completed. If any of you have a chance to go by there, go check it out. It looks pretty neat. It looks really, really nice. We've lined uh, $220,000 worth of sanitary sewer pipes. We've completed the restroom at the large yacht utilities for South Pier. We've completed the end park splash pad that was done this summer. Uh, we had great response from the, from the neighborhood there. We've completed the sanitary sewer extension for the police department. That's where we had to connect from Superior all the way to the police department, the police station location, the new one. Uh, the laterals were, were already, are already installed there. And we are in the process of completing the design for Indiana Avenue from 14th to 17th Street. And that construction is uh, scheduled to start July 2008. And then we've completed the promenade along uh, the north side of the Sheboygan River. And in 2008, we have other projects that I'll be talking to you about that we'll be working on. And then the other one I just wanted to give you a heads up on, and this, uh, a lot of credit uh, is extended. I would like to extend a lot of credit to uh, President Hanna and Alderman Meyer. Is I got an email today from the neighborhood uh, in, in the north side that, was a, that had concerns about the Walgreen going in the location where it was going. And as of today, uh, I understand the issue has been resolved. 
and the Walgreen can be developed, can be built there. So that's a great accomplishment. It's a great example of how neighborhoods, aldermen like President Hanna and Alderman Meyer can work with the neighborhood and planning department and the Common Council because it's coming before us. It's a great example of how things can be worked out to the to the best interest of all the parties involved. On the insure, on the, uh, I've got two more things for you. On, on the budget, I need to say something that's very important, and and that is that the the early retirement incentive program and the the insurance going out and shopping for insurance uh, for a different insurance company is going to save us not quite 1.5 million dollars, but around over a, a million dollars. That would not have been accomplished had not been for the hard work of President Hanna and, and Alderman Gisha. And I, I believe some of you other aldermen have had some input. I'm not quite sure who, but I know that President Hanna and Alderman Gisha, as was mentioned earlier, put an incredible amount of time into those two particular projects to bring some relief to our budget deficit. And because of their efforts, it worked. And I would like to extend my thanks to you, President Hanna, and I'm glad they kept you there. I hope if you try it again, they'll keep you again, okay? And at this point, I'd like to introduce to you our new Public Works Director, Mr. Bill Bidner. Would you please stand up, sir? Welcome to the team. Thank you. Mr. Bidner comes to us with extensive Public Works, Department of Public Works experience. Uh, today he hit the ground, ground running so fast he stumbled. And uh, he's ready to go and he's, uh, I think he's had his tours. He's going to be learning and listening and learning. I think he's had for a couple of weeks. So Mr. Bidner, welcome to the uh, city of Sheboygan. Welcome to our team. Okay, then moving along. We have a public hearing. Notice uh, that an ordinance will be acted upon this evening for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of North 24th Street, North of North Avenue. And this is the vacation of the little sliver of land that's between the residential home and uh, the, the, the car dealership there uh, for the Walgreens project. We're not acting on it. We're simply having the public hearing to give people an opportunity to speak. Is there anyone that would like to address the council with respect to that project? Please, sir. Please come to the podium. And sir, can I have your name, please? Mark Lake from Emred Cummings. Uh, can you spell your last name? L-A-K-E. L-A-K-E. That's easy. And from where? <laughs> um, our office is in Waukesha. Okay. And, and we're, we're talking about the Walgreens at Calumet North. Okay, and can I have the business address, please? W228N745 West Mound, one word, drive. Okay. okay. Waukesha. Okay. 53186. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. You may want to pull the mic up if it's not working right. Sure. Do you want to speak right into it? Thank so. you. Um, as the mayor had mentioned, uh, and thank you very much for those comments, Mayor, um, we are proposing a new Walgreens at the intersection of, Nash, of North Avenue and uh, Calumet in uh, northwest corner. Um, and over the last uh, six months, we've been working with the neighbors and, and working with the uh, staff on the, uh, its proposed development. And um, most recently, I've been trying to narrow down the, the scope of the project. And part of that scope uh, requires that um, a section of North uh, North Twenty uh, Fourth Street um, be vacated so that uh, the our development can basically fit on the total commercial piece. Originally, it didn't fit as part of the total commercial piece. It went into the net residential neighborhood immediately to the west, um, and then concerns were brought up by the neighbors. And um, we talked to the neighbors. We talked with staff. We had a couple meetings, several meetings. And um, I think we've come to an amicable solution, and um, and as a result, we're not no longer taking any of the single-family residential homes, and we're only really looking here for the vacation at 24th Street. Um, and having said that, um, 24th Street is not upside down. 24th Street 
runs north-south, and as part of our requirement, we were required to go through and get um, a one-third of the signatures of 24th Street from where we want to vacate it, which is just north of North Avenue, all the way down to Geel Avenue. I hope I spelled that right. Um, and what we received is 72 percent of the par of the parcels on that property. Um, and so our request is to vacate 24th Street, leaving uh, um, leaving the single-family properties alone to the west. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Motion and second to close the hearing. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda, items 14 1 through 14 21. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to accept and adopt all ROs and accept and file all RCs, but also I'd like to refer 1417 back to Public Works. Okay. Second. Motion and second to uh, ex accept the consent agenda and refer back 14 17 back to Public Works. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, the reason that the Public Works is, uh, it's been referred back to Public Works is there's a little discrepancy there with the, the time and the Public Works Committee would like to look at it again and they'll, it'll, it'll come back to us. There's no, there's no time of, of the essence right now. Alderman Bauck. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to get my two cents in here. We'd like to see that in District 2. We'd like to see that property put on the market and sold and that those, uh, that house start generating income for the city. We think such a pristine, well-located property like that ought to be generating, uh, gener generating money for us. Thank you, Alderman Bell. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1422 through 1425 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1426 by the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners who met and discussed resolution number 3170708 by Alderman Verhasselt, Hannah Clayunas regarding public works studying the cost and capabilities of the security cameras for the use in various city parks recommends that three security cameras be installed at various parks, King, Roosevelt, and potentially Workers Water Street Park. Funding will be with qualified block grant money and the Public Works budgeted funds on other cameras. Alderman uh, Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second uh, to accept and file the reporting committee. Okay, under discussion. Oh, Alderman Bell. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. No, uh, I was a couple of steps behind you on 1422. Should that also be referred to the newly formed special committee since it has to do with sidewalk cafes? That can be. Alderman, Vice President uh, Bourne. I have no objection to that, Alderman Bauck. Uh, if it goes on to law and licensing next Tuesday, I was going to make that referral. From anyway. there? Okay, yeah. very good. Okay, thank you. Very good. Alderman Clayton. I'm, I'm speaking to, uh, to Resolution 1426. Are we ready to do that? Okay, we're in the okay. discussion. Yes. Uh, I just was wondering why these parks were chosen. Uh, do you have some background for us? Alderman, hit your light. There you go. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to open the floor to Commissioner Montemayor, who is the chairperson of the Park and Forestry Committee Commission, and he would have a lot of information that Alderman Clayonis is asking for. Second. Motion and second to open the floor. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Montemayor, Citizen Montemayor, would you please come up? Podium. Thank you. Uh, Alderman uh, Clayonis, this, uh, as you know, this has gone through a lot of committees, went through Public Works, they, they looked at the cost, 
And one of the things that we, is, we studied is where we have the most vandalism in these parks. King Park is highly vulnerable. So is Roosevelt, Inn Park, Workman's Park. Uh, the recommendations come, came through that committee. Our recommendations were, after they got done with it, it was a dual referral, came to the commissioners to put this information together and recommend uh, trying to use as much grant money as we could. The parks that do qualify for this are King Park, uh, Sheridan Park, I believe, and Kiwanis Park. As you know, Workman's Park is very close to Kiwanis Park, and underneath that bridge is where we have a lot of vandalism, and you know that's, and that's also the place we have a water park or a water feature park. Uh, as, as you well know now that we have equipment that we install in Sheridan Park, we see more parents, people in that park. They kind of police it. That's a C2 park, so that we don't have a lot of trouble there. But we do have the trouble is at N Park, Roosevelt Park, and King Park. Those are the big three ones. We get this report from our public works uh, uh, directors. Uh, those are the people we go with it, and I've also studied this all through the summer to see what kind of vandalism goes on. There's mostly anywhere somebody can hike, which are the bathrooms. That's where they have the most problems. I hope this can answer, to help I answer your question. Okay, we have one more citizen. We have Alderman Venerable. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, being in the district that N Park is in, I just would like to ask, what's the reason why N Park's not on the list? How, why did it drop out? Okay, uh, here again, we're trying to use block grant money, that doesn't qualify as that now. But if we were to get the council to, to get us some money for that park, that would be an excellent way to start. Those, that park, especially that park. But now that we have that water feature in there, you have a lot of parents, mm -hmm. little kids that come into that park. They kind of police themselves up there and the, the, kids, the kids that are the, giving the trouble there kind of move out of the way then, okay? When you see parents, sir, you'll see that kind of trouble move away. Okay. Does that answer your question, sir? Yeah, thank okay. you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you, Citizen Montemayor. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion on 1426 to accept and file. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I will, uh, I think, uh, I've been advised. I think it's... Uh, it would be appropriate to go ahead, uh, Vice President Boren, to uh, refer 422 to special committee to for expediency. So thank you, Alwyn Bauk. Uh, make a notation. 1422 will go to law and licensing, city plan, and special committee on cafes. Thank you very much. Moving on, 1427 through 1430 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 1431 by Alderman Montemayor, supporting the intent of Sheboygan County to apply for a state comprehensive planning grant. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There being none, all in, uh, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1432 by Alderman Boren, Wangaman, Clayunas, and Rinfleisch establishing a special committee. Oh, yeah, we did, we did that. Never mind. Done. 1432 is done. Carried forward. 1433 lies over. 1434 and 35 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 1436, by Committee of the Whole, to whom was referred a copy of RC number 1260708, and pursuant to resolution number 300607 by Alderman Verhasselt, Barn, and Hannah, authorizing the Motor Vehicle Review Committee to study and report back to the Council on the potential use of some portion of the Motor Vehicle Fund who made various recommendations, the Committee of the Whole recommends accepting and adopting the report of committee and makes a favorable recommendation. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. 
Motion and second, under discussion. Uh, Attorney McLean. Uh, the, as I understand it, committee whole is recommending that the report of committee, which I'm not, the prior report of committee be accepted and adopted with a favorable recommendation. Okay, and so, all these one through five have been done. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Attorney McLean. Any further questions? There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1437 through 1441 to be referred. Report of committees eight, 1442 by finance. Recommended and approving the revised capital improvements program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period 2008 through 2012 and adopting the 2008 program for implementation. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I <clears throat> move to accept and adopt the RC and to pass the attached resolution. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1443 by salaries and grievances. Recommending rescinding resolution number 346 81 82 that authorizes the salary and grievance committee to establish policy regarding the new benefits having a direct monetary value to city employees not authorized by ordinance, resolution, or labor agreement, and passing the substitute resolution. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RC and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Motion in. Second. Second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance introduced 10, 1444 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1355. Resolution number 1160708 by Alderman Ryan approving the second amendment to contract for sale of land for private development and amendment to promissory note by and between River Park Place of Sheboygan LLC and the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Uh, Your Honor, basically what this is, is uh, this is a, uh, a TIF district that is underperforming at the moment. We are trying to get it developed. Um, this discounts the, the cost of the land to the developer slightly. Uh, with an agreement that the city shares in 50% of the profits from the sale of these properties in order to get this thing spurred and moving. So it's a, uh, it will be a, hopefully a, uh, a profitable move for the city. Wonderful. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Any further comments? There being none, please call the roll. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1358. 1358 resolution number 1170708 by Alderman Vanderweel, Rindleis, Smith, and Kittleson, authorizing the proper city officials to sign and enter into agreement with the cities of Fond du Lac and Manitowoc for the purposes of providing clinical ride along refresher training for City of Sheboygan firefighter paramedics. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, what this is is so that it will allow us to get ready so that we're not cold when we go, when we switch to the ambulance service. And there will be no overtime involved. And just to be clear, it's a refresher, not a training. It just allows us to refresh our, refresh the abilities of the of the of the guys and it'll be about 10 to 20 guys and this will start upon passage if we pass it tonight 
Thank you, Alderman Van Wiel. Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wonkman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Clayunas. Aye. 13 ayes. <coughs> Motion carries. 1352. General Ordinance Number 560708 by Alderman Boren, Wangeman, Clayunas, Manny, and Rindfleisch, repealing and recreating Division 2 of Article 2 of Chapter 130 of the Municipal Code so as to provide additional regulation of vehicles for hire within the City of Sheboygan. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Bourne, if I could direct this to you. Uh, section 1 of the ordinance uh, really should be reworded to say is hereby repealed and recreated. It just says is hereby created. The, uh, the caption is correct. It's we currently have a division 2 of article 2, so this is to create a new one. We have a corrected copy. There is a corrected. Yeah. Mr. President Bourne. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. That was on our on our desk tonight. A corrected copy of the first page. Oh, okay. I didn't get so it. I would I would uh, I would move to uh, make that correction in the language uh, as described by no. Attorney McLean. What's just a, we can just change it as a corrected. You've got the corrected copy. Okay. You're passing yes, we that. Do. Yeah, you don't need to. All That's right. fine. I apologize. I didn't see a corrected copy. Thank so. you. Okay. So uh, again, it's uh, thirteen fifty two. And there's no need to amend. You have the corrected copy that says repeal on it. Any more discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunas. And Meyer. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 1357 should be 1353. General Ordinance Number 570708 by Alderman Verhasselt, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer amending the Municipal Code so as to change the t table of organization of the Information Technology Department, Information Technology Director. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I guess I just would like some clarification on this. It appears to me that this ordinance is reducing the current employee's pay grade, and I'm get, what is the justification for this? Can someone explain that to me? Um, and then also I'd like to know, was there a job description with the, with the changes on it as well? Okay. Thank you. The, the, the job description has already been passed by salary and grievance and the council. All this is doing is uh, adjusting... The, the pay for the position, the starting pay for the position. Uh, we felt that we could attract an individual uh, for that amount and we, did, we didn't have to go as far, as high as we've, we uh, normally would have gone. And it's mainly an adjustment in the salary. That's all it is. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I guess I have a question similar to yours, Gene, uh, that um, this person will be managing their own department before they were under finance, and now they're managing their own department, and their the salary is going down. It seems kind of counterintuitive, uh, it, the way I understand this position to be, the, you know, the, that developed and designated. Mm -hmm. The uh, the director will be handling the same number of people they were doing under finance. It's just no longer will they report to finance; they'll report to the mayor. Mm -hmm. So it, the, the same work is there. And it, it was just felt with the uh, chief, uh, human resources director and myself that given that, we can still attract a very qualified person for that amount of money at saving the, the city money and the taxpayer money. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So basically what we're saying here, this is going to be a new hire we're going to bring on for this position. This is not something somebody currently in the position that uh, we are, uh, in effect, going to demote at a lesser uh, great uh, lesser uh, pay grade, correct? Mm -hmm. So, that sounds like a good move to me. I think so too. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Any more discussion? Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
Just clarification. So the, currently we do not have an informa information technology department director. Is that correct? You've already created that. The council is. We already kind of, but is there a person in that position? Done. There is a person in that position, and following this, we will be lowering that person's salary. Is it a, um, uh, I know we're looking going forward at bringing somebody in at a, a lower wage, uh, being more competitive in that aspect. Uh, it seems to me if we have someone in there already, unless the performance is an issue, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with the person who's currently in that position uh, having publicly the salary reduced versus going to through salary grievances or perhaps having some kind of issue resolved, some kind of, of um, you know, if there's an issue, warnings and, and follow through that way. I understand it's our prerogative to do so, but it makes me uncomfortable to do so while there's a person in that position right okay. now. This needs to be clarified here. Okay, we're not lowering anybody's salary. You've already created the positions. Salary and grievance created the position. Salary and grievance uh, put the job description together. The council has already approved it. The person that's holding that position now is interim. If, if the person wasn't holding it, then there would be no person there. We are currently advertising the position, and there's applications coming in. So there really, there is no person holding that position now. That position is being publicly offered to the public right now to apply. Okay, so we're not lowering anybody. All it is is establishing a new standard of wage, which probably should have been done a long time ago, which the salary and grievance found prudent to do, and is being referred to you. Okay, we will... Call the roll. Ren Fleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Longaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 11 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 1356, General Ordinance Number 580708, by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending the municipal code so as to change the title and job code for the assessment coordinator in the assessor's office table of organization. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the ordinance to be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There will be a none. Please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Swangaman? Aye. Foran? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 1445 is a communication from Michael Muth, Muth Company LLC, regarding the proposed development of the Walgreens store on North Avenue and asking if the city has done a traffic flow analysis and safety study of the streets leading to and the intersection of North Avenue and Calumet Drive. That will be referred to public protection and safety, and I'd like to refer that to City Plan 2. Continue. 1446 is an RO by the Deputy Finance Director submitting an agreement from Kmart and certain of its subsidiaries and affiliates regarding 2001 and 2002 personal property taxes. That will be referred to Finance Committee. 1447 is a resolution authorizing entering into an agreement with EarthTech, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, for the design of the fixed dock along a portion of the south seawall of the Sheboygan River. That will be referred to Public Works. 1448 is a committee report by the Special Committee on Risk Management uh, regarding a claim from Brian and Laura Bauman recommending that the report of officer be placed on file and to pay the claim in the amount of $907.15. That one lies over. 1449 is a committee report by the Group Health Insurance Committee uh, with various recommendations. That will be referred to finance. 1450 is a resolution amending resolution number 470708 by Alderperson Hanna, passed by the Council on July 2nd, establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates for the medical benefit plan effective for January 2008 coverage. That will be referred to finance committee too. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Stand adjourned. Thank you very much and have a good night.